Welcome back to the channel. My name is Colin, if you guys don't already know me. Um, and this is the second video in my series of, you know, what kind of fun car stuff there is to do in Seattle when you're from out of town visiting or if you're just a local who's never, you know, who's never known about these places or car events going on. So today we're at Zadart Exotic Car Club and Rentals. So we're located in downtown Bellevue. So 11855 Bell Red Road, um, Bellevue, Washington, 98005. And we're in downtown Bellevue, right across the Mercedes Benz of Bellevue and Porsche as well. Um, so this company was created with the sole purpose of allowing car enthusiasts, car lovers, or even non-car people to experience these exotics. So for example, like this 580-2 Huracan. So this is a Lamborghini, which is entry level. It's not the doors that go up. It's not the Venador. So we do have that as well. Uh, so we actually have a variety of cars. So right now our fleet is uh, hovering around 20 cars at the moment. Um, and so, you know, we wanted people to be able to, you know, experience these cars because we also love cars as well. Um, but at the same time, maintenance and actually owning one of these cars is really expensive. And if something, you know, for example, like if the backup camera on the Venador breaks, the backup camera, you don't think the backup camera is going to break, but when it does break or if it does break, it's $4,000. So obviously that kind of puts it in perspective about how, um, how that translates into our rental cost because you could rent our Aventador for 1,700 for 24 hours. And that car, you know, sticker was, you know, anywhere from 400,000, you know, plus depending on how you actually spec the vehicle. Um, and so this is kind of the short backstory. We can go and get on inside and kind of show you more of the fleet and how we actually uh, do our rentals. So this is one of the vehicles that we have um, that is fairly popular because it is in the lower mid-range. So this is the BMW i8. So this one's going to be a three-cylinder hybrid, um, which is kind of a weird idea. And the doors do go up like, um, so we can show you here. So the doors do go up like, like this. But obviously this car has the safety features where they won't let you go into drive with the doors up like this. So even though this car is a very flex machine, it's, you know, it's not very flexible when you're trying to ghost ride it, which obviously we don't recommend doing here. And as you can see, this car has a carbon chassis, a carbon tub. Um, so that's why the sill is so high. So this car is actually, you know, I would say fairly technologically advanced, but it is not on the top of my list of favorites. And then here we're gonna have our Rolls Royce Ghost. So our Ghost is gonna be most popular for weddings. Um, so this is usually what that car goes out for. Um, and then occasionally we'll have events where people need to pick up their, um, their clients who are high-end VPs or executives of any sort. Um, and then they need someone with insurance to take their guests around it. So they usually tend to do this, which is the ghost, obviously. Um, so we're looking at getting a, a race, which is a very popular request because that way you don't really need a driver because it's a two-door. Um, and then onto our 488 here. So our 488 is really popular because it's still considered like the latest, greatest Ferrari model. Um, obviously the F8 and then the uh, Tributo obviously haven't been, you know, I don't even think they've landed yet. <clears throat> but anyways, this car's going to be a V8 twin turbo, so this car makes close to 700 horsepower, which makes it significantly faster than the 458, but it doesn't sound as good. So this is another very popular choice here at Zadart. Um, and then obviously to the interior, everything is very, very similar to the 458, but this car was not designed by Pininfarina. They essentially just rehashed on the 458 chassis so that's why the car looks so similar but the front i believe is you know it's a little lackluster but the piece they did kind of solve it but even with the piece though there are aesthetic issues um that that um that that car does have or well this this model 48 does have so now we're gonna get inside here well So you're going to see, oh. so we're inside the 488 right now and then you can see obviously a Ferrari is very uh, driver focused and oriented as you see the horns are here and here um, so where your thumb essentially would be so it would be like 10 and 2 um, and then your blinkers are going to be here and here so then you can just always just keep your hands focused on the car. Um, and then you'll see the knob here. So this is going to be your adjustment switch to go between race mode, um, traction control off, you know, stability control off, and then your sport mode and your wet mode. And then this car does have a keyless entry and, a, or well, not necessarily keyless, but it's keyless start. So you can start and stop with just this button here, while the 458 you have to turn the key to turn the car off. 
and then your high beams, your wipers, and then your bumpy road mode, and then your menus on your both sides to control these screens right here and here. And then obviously everything is still very open, so I feel like the Ferraris do tend to have the most room on the interior. And then obviously your reverse button, your auto button, and then your launch control button, your window switches, and then on the side door here are gonna be your gas cap and your front trunk and then obviously a door handle, your mirror adjustments, and then the parking brake. So one thing, so yeah, the parking brake's right here. So one thing I do like about Ferrari is that Ferrari does offer, um, sorry, not offer, but they have this, uh, their parking brake automatically disengages when you get into gear and you let off the brake and get on the gas. And then another detail is their, their steering wheels. So their steering wheels have this shift light up top here. Um, so obviously you can see this here, it turns on. Um, so that's one of my favorite parts, especially with all the carbon on the steering wheel. So a Ferrari without the carbon steering wheel is something that um, I highly don't enjoy. <laughs> and then obviously the seats, we have the regular seats, but you can opt for the buckets, of course. And the buckets are fairly comfortable as well, once again. But this car does sound lackluster compared to the 458. So. Um, I don't enjoy this car as much, but if I had the money, I would purchase 482 daily. And then next we have our G63 here. So this is going to be a factory matte black paint. So this is not a wrap, um, though a lot of people do like to wrap their G-Wagons in matte black. But this is a factory finish, and this car has a Rentec tune with the Brabus wheels and then a Brabus exhaust as well. And then on the interior, so this car is going to be the old generation now. So there is another generation, the new generation, which I have driven, which drives a lot better. All the old Gs do tend to drive like trucks. You can see the quilted stitching here. And then obviously your interior is going to look like, you know, this generation. It didn't change too much throughout the years. And then, but with your new G63, that did change quite a bit. So this is the McLaren 650S that we have. So this is going to be the only McLaren that we have at the moment. Um, everyone is wanting us to get a 720S, but the 720S is expensive and obviously they do depreciate um, fairly quickly. Um, so since today is a Monday, we are um, detailing all the cars. So all the cars do tend to come back after the weekend and Monday. Obviously, most people have to work. Um, so it's just we're just getting a full interior and then exterior detail done on the car. And then sometimes it does happen to be so where the car comes back and we don't have enough time to get the car like perfectly clean for the next customer. So that's something that we struggle with. Um, and you can see the McLaren has a significant amount of um, trunk space here. And then, so this car is very suitable for touring. So as I said earlier, the spiders versus the coupes, the spiders are gonna be a little bit tighter, but uh, me and my other coworker who is 6'4", I'm 6'2", and 6'3", on a good day, so I fit fairly well in this car. Um, so you're gonna see all the carbon accents um, and on the interior, the trim. So this is all gonna be uh, options. There are factory options that you can choose. And then this car is a 3.8 liter V8 twin turbo. So this car does eat quite a bit of gas. You can see all the carbon details in there as well. And then this gap is always gonna look like it's open. Um, people always ask us if it's open, but it's not, it's closed. That's what it looks like in a closed position. So this car is, uh, it's on the same level as the 458 and the Huracan, but maybe it's because people don't really understand what this brand McLaren is. So um, it may not be as popular or first choice uh, compared to the Lambos or Ferraris, but I do recommend you would try this car out if you do have it because this car is so technologically advanced you know their sole purpose and focus of the vehicle was to be the quickest you know on the track although it is a street vehicle and then moving on to our gtr r35 here this car is a very popular russell as well because it's in the lower range just like the i8 um, it is quick but at the same time it, this car hasn't have it hasn't had a real refresh so this car is about 20 years old now Oh, no, sorry, not 20. Uh, this car is about 12 years old now. Um, this car came out in 2008. Although this one is a 15, but then, you know, next year, the 2020s, and then I believe there's going to be a 2021, you know, with the anniversary editions and stuff. Um, so this car is still, you know, rather old. So the 10-year thing is, you know, not the best, but, I mean, I guess that's how some people do it. You know, don't change what's broken, right? It's not broken. 
And then we have the SLS here. So the SLS is going to be a V8 with the 6.2 liter. So it's a 6.3 on the side, but it is actually just a 6.2. So that's how Mercedes did it for all their cars of this generation. So this one is going to be the gold wing. So the doors do go up, you know, like that. It's going to be like the 300 SL. Um, this one is very comfortable as well, but getting in and out of it is going to be hard as well because the door sill is rather high. And then you're going to see that very long protruding hood here. So this is also one of the cars that, you know, people would obviously choose the Lambos and the Ferraris over because that's what the mass media always portrays to be the cool car. You know, these are more for um, people who kind of understand cars a little bit better. So we're back outside again. So this is going to be our 580-2 Huracan Spider. So Spider obviously indicates that it's convertible. So Lamborghini is a soft top convertible on the entry levels. Um, and so this car, if you're, I would say, above you know if you're six four six five it's a really a hard fit because of the the soft top mechanism they have to have the cabin area kind of smaller so that they could fit that in the back so the coupes so obviously it's the same comparison so most of the times the convertible and then the um, versus the coupe the coupe is going to have a lot more room so this is going to be our lp 550-2 so it's obviously going to be in your we'll just call it lambo gray um, so two is going to stand for a rear wheel drive and then this car is actually a pretty rare spec and colorway. This car is a 13, so one of the later years. Um, but for the car the same time, so around the 458, even though they're not, you know, this, it's kind of hard to say. They're the same level, but then they're not really the same um, trim because this car was made a long time ago and it's about every 10 years that they refresh their entry level models. Um, so on the exterior, it looks rather, uh, it looks rather good, but on the interior, it is slightly dated. And then obviously this is one of uh, my, probably my channel's uh, and friends' favorite cars, the 991 GT3. So our 991 GT3 has the uh, carbon ceramics, and then it's gonna have the 918 buckets as well on the inside. And then this car is obviously a driver's car favorite, even though it is a PDK. Oh, and we also have the roll bar in the back here, which is something that was an option in other markets you know for rs's and stuff but in the u.s safety regulations do not allow that and then the 901.1 so yeah that's a 0.1 that's going to be the 3.8 not the 4.0 and then we also have a hellcat so the challenger or sorry the charger hellcat um, and this car we have red key or black key options and this one's also a very fairly popular rental i would say so then this is our other Lamborghini. So currently today our Aventador and our 458 are not in. And then I'm pretty sure there's another car, another couple cars that I'm forgetting. Um, but this car has the FI exhaust, as you can see here. And then this car is going to be in the orange. And we also have the Vorsteiner wing on it. So it's going to be a little swan neck. And this car also has the orange interior. So this one's a 610-4. So the 580-2 Spider is going to be the rear wheel drive convertible. And the 610-4 is gonna be the four-wheel drive, um, or all-wheel drive, with 610 horsepower. So that's what it really indicates. The 580 is gonna stand for five, around 580 horsepower. So those, if you ever wondered what those numbers are for, then uh, yeah. And then the 458 was a 4.5 liter V8. Uh, so that is actually one of my favorite cars still. It sounds the best. Too bad it's not here today, but I'm pretty sure we'll get to it in the future. No, no worries. So we're gonna get a little bit more in depth about how we do our rentals here at Zadart and what are the necessary requirements. So actually we offer, I would say four programs that you can you cannot choose from. So obviously we do sell gift cards. So we can sell a one hour, three hour, or a full day, 24 hour um, gift card. And that's if you're you know, someone that you wanna buy a present for, doesn't know what they want. Um, and so you just get them a gift card and then come in whenever and use it. And then that's going to be on to our regular uh, rental. So we're going to have our 24 hour period. So that's going to include 24 miles with every 24 hours. And obviously pickup is going to be anywhere from 10 to seven, which is within our um, hours of operation. And then we're going to have our hourly rate. So our hourly rate is going to be a four hour minimum. And then you're going to be paying a price per mile. There's no mileage included with that. So that does add up if you are driving a lot. And then the next one is going to be our newest and latest program. So it's going to be called Less Drive Program. It's not just a promotion. It's actually a new program that we've implemented. So it's going to be a one hour or a two hour um, rental. And it's going to have unlimited miles, no gas charges, and no security deposits. So as long as you have a valid driver's license and proper insurance to insure our vehicle, that is going to send you on your way. Um, so obviously with insurance, it's going to be something that's a necessity. We don't sell insurance here. Um, and then you know, if your insurance does not cover our vehicle or if you don't have the 
um, if you don't have the proper um, documentation like a driver's license, then we can't allow you to go ahead and rent that vehicle. And then mileage on, um, so any, basically any of the costs for these vehicles, um, our rental costs, you know, a lot of people think it's going to be cheap, but um, I would say we're cheaper than any of the other rental companies out here in the U.S., but at the same time, this is rather, you know, why these rentals are expensive and cheap at the same time, it's because the maintenance on these vehicles are very expensive, you know. Everyone wants to experience the cost of owning a Lamborghini or Ferrari and, you know, obviously flexing it or showing it off, but then the cost to maintain the car are really high. And there's a lot of times where spontaneous issues will come up. So even if the car's been properly maintained, sometimes some part will just want to break. And then that could be anywhere from a couple thousand dollars to tens and thousands of dollars, which is why, you know, obviously all the rental companies, including us, we charge around the price range that we do because um, this is something that is gonna, you know, that we have to pay for. You as a customer may not have to pay for this unless you obviously did that and you had broken the part. Um, so like I said, now you know where our, you know, where our store is located and then our business hours are, you know, Monday through Sunday. Well, Monday through Monday, we're open seven days a week from 10 to 7. So if you guys are interested in checking out some of the cars that we do have here, um, feel free to drop by. I'm usually here on Mondays and Tuesdays, but I'll be here, I'll be in and out of the office, um, you know, for the rest of the week or on weekends, unless there's something happening. So if you guys are in town, or if you guys just want to check out some cool cars, you guys are always feel free to stop by. And then, or if you need to, you know, purchase a gift card or you want to schedule a rental, you can always contact me directly, obviously on Instagram, or, um, you know, leave a comment here, and then leave, you know, contact information, and then we can get in touch with you. Um, otherwise, and then if you want to check out the full fleet of cars, you can also go on our website, so that's going to be zadar.com, and then you can go to our fleet section and you can see all the vehicles that we do currently have in our inventory, and those photos of the vehicles are going to be the actual vehicles that you will be renting. And so to reiterate one more time, we're going to have exhausts on the 650S, the 458, the R8, the Huracan, so the 610-4, um, our Lamborghini Aventador, the Brabus the G63, and then on our Liberty Walk GTR as well, which I might have said already, but... Um, those are the couple cars that we do have exhaust. So if you do want something slightly toned down, we do also have other options as well. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me on Instagram um, or leave a comment and then I can get you taken care of here. And then we'll see you on the next video.